As game one of the Western Conference semifinals creeps a night closer, the question becomes, how can the Vegas Golden Knights contain the world's best player, Connor McDavid? We talk about that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden, as mentioned on today's episode, heading into Game 1 of the Western Conference Semifinals between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights. The big question will be, can the Golden Knights contain Connor McDavid like the LA Kings did, or will Connor McDavid become, well, the best player in the world once again? We will talk about that in just a second, but also on today's episode, heading into this next series, the Edmonton Oilers may be expecting some more healthy bodies for the second round. How could the Edmonton Oilers set up their lineup heading into the series against the Vegas Golden Knights? And could there be some more flexibility from the Edmonton Oilers forwards and defensemen heading into the second round? And we wrap up today's episode with the three keys to success for the Edmonton Oilers to move on to the Western Conference Finals for the second straight year. All that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Heading into this series, the Edmonton Oilers' top three leading scorers include Leon Dreisaitl with 11, Connor McDavid with 10, and Evan Bouchard also with 10. And while Connor McDavid does lead, or is, excuse me, in the top three and tied for second, really, four points for the Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs. A lot can be made, and really the argument can be made, that Connor McDavid has not played to, well, Connor McDavid's standards. He can play better. And that can be attributed to the fact that the Los Angeles Kings have two of the best defensive forwards in the game today, and they were able to run both of them relatively well in Philip Deneau and on Jay Kopitar against Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl quite often. But while they were able to contain Connor McDavid, they weren't able to contain Leon Dreisaitl. But heading into the Vegas Golden Knights series, they have a little bit of a different structure when it comes to their players and their forwards and To say that the Vegas Golden Knights do not have the defensive prowess in the forward core would probably be an understatement. We know what my favorite uh, advanced stat is. I'm not a big analytics guy, as I always like to preface this with, but if I were to pick one analytic to really put everybody on the same level, it would be goals for and goals against per 60 minutes. That means if you were to play 60 minutes or average out 60 minutes, which is how long a hockey game is, everybody would be on the same level and it takes in the contributions you make, the impacts that you make, not only the times you are out there on a, on the ice for a goal, but the uh, the dangerous shots that you take, things like that. I think it's a relatively good stat for analytics purposes. The goals against per 60 minutes for the uh, Vegas Golden Knights and their forwards is not very favorable. Ten, the top player for goals against per 60 minutes for the Vegas Golden Knights 
has played 10 games in the regular season. Then a player who played 18 games and then a player who played nine games. The player who played regularly, who had the best goals against per 60 minutes, was Brett Howden, who last game against the Winnipeg Jets played on the third line for the Vegas Golden Knights. Brett Howden on the third line. Then after him was William Carrier with a 1.73. And William Carrier played on the fourth line in game five for the Vegas Golden Knights. After that is Ivan Barbashev, who is the top line left winger, who is playing top line minutes, but is a left winger who doesn't really match well against Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. Then Keegan Kolasar, who is also on the fourth line. Then Ben Hutton, who is a second-pairing defenseman. Nicholas Roy, who is the fourth-line center. And then who finally gets regular top six minutes as a top player for the Vegas Golden Knights, William Carlson, who finally comes in 10th. For the Vegas Golden Knights. Connor McDavid this year so far. Well I should say in the playoffs so far. Is putting up. Numbers that do not add up to the season that he had so far. In the first series this season. Goals four per 60 minutes. Connor McDavid has put up a 3.25 at 5 on 5. Where this past season, he put up at least a three and a half at five on five. And during the season, in all situations, Connor McDavid led the Edmonton Oilers with a six to uh, six point two seven goals for per sixty minutes in the regular season. Where in the playoffs, a six point one three third on the Oilers. Behind Zach Hyman, who a lot of people have given a lot of flack and crap on for not being able to, and including myself, I have said he needed to be better, but who gave, who has received a lot of flack for needing to be better offensively. Connor McDavid is behind him. And Leon Dreisaitl, obviously. But if Connor McDavid can step out of his shell which feels weird to say and again he is probably the the likely matchup that Vegas is going to go out for is probably Jack Eichel, Jonathan Marcheseau and Ivan Barbashev for Connor McDavid but I could see William Carlson, Riley Smith and Mike Amadio because Mike Amadio has been a good piece for the Vegas Golden Knights down the stretch scored a game winning goal in overtime for the Vegas Golden Knights against the Winnipeg Jets he's been playing well I could see them maybe trying to have a shutdown role there, but they can't keep up with Connor McDavid in any way. Anyway. The thing is, Connor McDavid said that he expects this series to be a fast series, a back and forth type series. If that happens with the Vegas Golden Knights and the Edmonton Oilers, this could be a very, very quick series. A very quick series. Alrighty, let's move on from uh, the best player in the world, which uh, feels weird to say because we were just saying how uh, he needs to be better, but is also a very good sign for the Edmonton Oilers. Either way, the Edmonton Oilers could have some potential returning players heading into game one or the early part of this series of the second round of the NHL playoffs. But how does these or how do these new players or returning players fit into the lineup? And how could the Edmonton Oilers line up throughout this series against the Vegas Golden Knights? We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. A couple weeks ago, I was in Toronto, and one morning, me and my buddies were in a certain Canadian cafe that I probably shouldn't mention by name right now, and we were wondering what to do that night, and we found tickets on game time for the Toronto FC match against Atlanta United, got tickets that morning 
for the fourth row in the corner. Watch Richie Larea score an absolute banger goal and celebrate right in front of us. And that all happened because we got tickets that morning of the game. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals for tickets for football, basketball, baseball, hockey, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row four or less. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive and buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute pr- tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Alrighty, just before we head into uh, the potential lineups and lineup returns for the Edmonton Oilers heading into the second round, uh, news coming out if you haven't heard yet for the schedule for the Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights in round two. Now, this was supposed to be a game that started Wednesday and Friday was game two. But it has changed. Now the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights start the series still on Wednesday, same time, 7.30 Mountain Time. But instead of playing Friday, the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights will play Game 2 on Saturday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And then the two games in Edmonton for Games 3 and 4 will be Monday and Wednesday. Now, on Wednesday, May 10th, the band disturbed, yes, like the the wah, yeah, that band, uh, body not bodies hit the floor, is that body whatever, uh, you know what I'm talking about. They were supposed to play that night at Rogers Place, but now this they have moved to the next night on Thursday, May 11th. So I assume when they probably planned the tour. On the disturbed side that uh, they made it so that they knew that that was going to happen, I guess, maybe it, it, it very interesting stuff behind the scenes. But uh, yes, that means that uh, the series will then go uh, Monday, Wednesday at Rogers Place instead of what was presumed to be a Sunday, Tuesday matchup and a lot of people are upset rightfully so because when it, it, it was it came out that the games were supposed to be Wednesday Friday and and from a, a, an official NHL release and you went to Ticketmaster or you went to T-Mobile Arena website or the official website and they had the tickets out for Saturday or uh, Friday, May 5th, instead of Saturday, May 6th. Now, again, I guess there's always the mini asterisk and read uh, between the lines and whatever of uh, uh, subject to change, whatever. But yeah, a lot of people who booked their trip around the Friday, not very pumped up but either way just thought in case you missed it very interesting stuff considering that is coming from a a professional league but i uh i i i rest my case uh let's move on to potential lineups for the edmonton oilers heading into the second round against the vegas golden knights as Matthias Janmark is bound to come back from injury for the Edmonton Oilers, it sounds like at least, as he has been practicing and getting more active at least for the Edmonton Oilers in practice heading into the second round against again the Vegas Golden Knights, in case you didn't heard, in case you didn't hear. But He is a valuable player for the Edmonton Oilers, and the Edmonton Oilers are in a very different situation from where they were at last year. 
And I, I came to, it was almost a, a, uh, a come to the light moment that I had earlier today where the Edmonton Oilers have players who can, who they can insert into the lineup and have immediate impacts and, and, and have a function in the lineup instead of just being a warm body. Last year, the Edmonton Oilers did not have that. It was uh, arguments over Zach Cassian being in the lineup and wanting to throw Dylan Hall, not even wanting, needing to throw Dylan Hall away into the lineup for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, you had Yessa Pugliarvi, who was up and down, playing in the top six and then not, and then getting benched and stuff like that. But now the Edmonton Oilers have guys like Clean Cost, and Warren Fogel, Kyler Yamamoto, Matthias Janmark, and still Dylan Holloway, who can be inserted into this lineup, and many people may be able to make the argument about, well, Raphael Lavoie, who was called up today. Not saying that he will, but he was a, a very key player for the Bakersfield Condors, developed very well down the stretch for the Bakersfield Condors and the Edmonton Oilers, so potentially someone that could help the Edmonton Oilers, and that is, again, barring any, or that is in the case of any major injuries for the Edmonton Oilers, but that's just saying. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Let's get to the potential lineups if Matthias Janmark does return to the lineup because the Edmonton Oilers do need his defensive presence. He was genuinely missed by the Edmonton Oilers in and without the series as they played their best defensive game really in game one where he was healthy and played his best game, one of his best games as an Edmonton Oiler too. So if Matthias Janmark does return to the lineup for the Edmonton Oilers, say in game one or game two, the Edmonton Oilers uh, could go with a different or a couple of different uh, lineups. I'm going to start off with the more traditional way. If Matthias Janmark does return to the lineup for the Edmonton Oilers, I could see the Edmonton Oilers potentially go back to a 12-6 in game one, just like they did in game one against the Los Angeles Kings. They could go with Evander Kane, Connor McDavid, and Leon Dreisaitl on the top line, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Nick Bukestad, and Zach Hyman on the second line, Clean Costin, Ryan McLeod, and Matthias Janmark on the third line, and Warren Fogel with Derek Ryan and Kyler Yamamoto on the fourth line. Then on defense, you would have Darnell Nurse and Cody Ceci, Matthias Ekholm and Evan Bouchard, Brett Kulak, and I would have Vinny DeHarnay in there instead of uh, uh, Phil. Philip Broberg, not to say that Philip Broberg has played poorly because I don't think that at all. I think, in fact, he has been one of the better players for the Edmonton Oilers, especially uh, uh, analytically so far in these playoffs. So, yes, I, I, I don't think that putting DeHarnay in over Broberg what would be a, a knock on... Philip Broberg. Vinny DeHarnay adds something to the Edmonton Oilers lineup that mm, Philip Broberg just can. And that is not, again, a knock on his play. Philip Broberg also brings something to the lineup that Vinny DeHarnay doesn't bring. And that is his, how dynamic he is, his skating, his ability to move the puck. He is still a very strong and good player. But Vinny DeHarnay is built for the playoffs. He is a strong player. He is difficult to play in front of the net. And for a team who is full of very strong players and, and, and players, a uh, hard-nosed chipper players like the Vegas Gold Knights, Vinny DeHarnay is a good fit for the Oilers in these playoffs. So I would have DeHarnay at least for a potential 12-6. But if they do run into the same issue that they did in Game 5 and Game 4, really not Game 5, in Game 4 where Vinny DeHarnay does get benched, that does handcuff them a little because they aren't able to then throw out a Philip Broberg. But that's a potential risk they have to take. Then, also with the 12-6, just kind of shifting around with the idea with 
Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl not playing together. Again, going back to the fact that if the Vegas Golden Knights are able to potentially uh, shut down a Connor McDavid or a Leon Dreisaitl, it is very unlikely that they are going to be able to shut down both of them. And if you're able to play them on separate lines, that makes for more distribution, and especially with the play of guys like Nick Bukestad, Clean Costin, the Edmonton Oilers would be able to really spread the wealth around the lineup. So let's split up Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. I would have Evander Kane with Connor McDavid and Zach Hyman, elevate Hyman with Connor McDavid and try and get him going at five on five. Then Ryan Nugent Hopkins with Leon Dreisaitl, and I'd promote Yamamoto here. I'd put Yamamoto. Yamamoto in the top six, have Nugent Hopkins and Yamamoto just kind of play out their their aggressive forecheck that they're able to play. Kyler Yamamoto forces a lot of turnovers, as does Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins is really good with the puck directly after a turnover. He makes a really good first pass after a turnover, and uh, that would be why I would kind of keep them together, because then you just find Leon Dreisaitl, and you know what's going to happen next. Uh, third line of Warren Fogle, Nick Bukestad, and Matthias Janmark. I think Jay Woodcroft kind of favors Fogle a little more over Costin right now, although uh, you can flip Costin and Fogle on that third line and make it a cost and buke said Yanmark. I think that line would be just as good. But just for the sake of consistency, uh, the fourth line would be Costin, McLeod, and Ryan. I think that line would be very good as well. And then again, same line, defensive uh, pairings as well. Nurse, CC, Echo, and Bouchard, Kulak, Dayarne, or Broberg. You insert whoever you want there. And finally for the Oilers, if they go back to the 11-7 lineup, I have a player who actually won the series for the Oilers against the LA Kings coming out of the lineup. But I have Evander Kane, Connor McDavid, and Leon Dreisaitl on the top line. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Nick Bukestad, and Zach Hyman together. Kleem Costin, Ryan McLeod, and Matthias Janmark on the third line. And Warren Fogle and Derek Ryan as the 10th and 11th forwards, meaning that Kyler Yamamoto comes out of the lineup mostly because most of the other players kind of play more of a function other than Warren Fogle because, again, Fogle seems to get a little bit more of a, a president over Kyler Yamamoto or some players as well. I would take out Warren Fogle, but I could see Yamamoto coming out there as well. And then, meaning if the Oilers do go 11-7, they go Nurse, CeCe, Echo, Bouchard, Kulak, DeHarnay, and Philip Broberg. And, of course, how have I not mentioned... Stuart Skinner <laughs> getting the start for the Edmonton Oilers through it all. Now, just before we wrap up, uh, speaking of lineups or wrap up this segment before we wrap up the show too, uh, a few other lineup notes as well as the Edmonton Oilers have also made a couple more uh, roster moves as James Hamblin, Raphael Lavoie, and Philip Kemp have all been recalled from Bakersfield for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, again, you will still see probably more and more players, especially with the being the start of the month being called up from Bakersfield and that is because I, I forget who it was who mentioned this on Twitter who brought this up but since most AHL players live month to month and with their uh, deals with uh, apartments and stuff like that they are month to month they're likely finishing out their deals or finishing out moving out and stuff like that so you will probably again see more of an influx of more players coming up expect guys like like hopefully Xavier Borgo as well, Justin Bailey as well might be coming up for the Edmonton Oilers. We've already seen players like Cam Deneen. Uh Now, off the top of my head, I don't remember if Marcus Niemelainen has been called up either, so I would expect him to be called up too if he hasn't already. So, again, expect an influx of players, especially at the start of the month. Alrighty, let's move on to the final segment of today's episode, the three keys to victory for the Edmonton Oilers in this series, and we will talk about that in just a second but first today's episode is brought to you by athletic greens 
Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted to better my gut health, optimize my immune system, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great without all of the pills, like the million different pills you have to take. And that's exactly what I get with AG1. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food store superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of the things. Plus, it's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it is all good for you. And it contains less than one gram of sugar. No GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, all while still tasting great. It costs less than three dollars a day which means you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit athletic greens is over 7,000 five-star reviews and is recommended by professional athletes right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop in a cup of water every day that is it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode with the three keys to victory for the Edmonton Oilers in this series for them to advance to their second Western Conference final appearance in the last two years. And we're going to start off with the special teams. They need to get on the special teams as often as possible. And that even kind of includes the penalty kill. Because not only do the Edmonton Oilers have, well, the best penalty kill or power play of all time ever, kind of, they're kind of good. It's the best ever. <laughs> like, they're very good. But power play and the penalty kill for the Vegas Golden Knights, all special teams, are not very good. This past regular season... The Vegas Golden Knights, their power play sat 18th in the league with a 20.3. Their penalty kill sat 19th in the league with a 77.4. Then in the playoffs so far, they have had the second worst Pa uh, penalty kill so far with a 58.3 the only team worse the Los Angeles Kings with a 43.8 then the power play for the Vegas Golden Knights are at 10th in the playoffs so far at an 18.8 the Oilers power play is first with a 56.3 in the playoffs so far. And the Edmonton Oilers penalty kill, while not the best, is 12th at a 66.7. Still 8 points better than the Vegas Golden Knights. So, the first key special teams for the Edmonton Oilers. Be on the special teams as often as possible. And if you are on the special teams late or on the shorthanded late in a game take that to your advantage and what i mean by that is you can kill a lot of time if your penalty kill is good if they have to play the dump and chase game and you have a guy back there and you're able to clear it out and get them to regroup once again or if you're able to contain the puck and move the puck around for a little bit then you're able to kill some time and that the Edmonton Oilers are good at moving the puck around, you can kill some clock and potentially win a game. So, 
Special teams, the first key to victory for the Edmonton Oilers in the second round. The second key for the Edmonton Oilers is the physicality. Now, a little bit of a spoiler alert that I have. uh, uh, Episode coming out tomorrow, crossover with Tony Cordasco from Locked On Golden Knights. And we talked about the physicality that the Edmonton Oilers do possess and how they are a big, heavy team at times and are able to throw hits around. But the team who the Vegas Golden Knights just played threw 259 hits in the first round in five games. The Winnipeg Jets had the most hits per 60 minutes in the first round and still currently in the playoffs so far with 48.1. So the Vegas Golden Knights are already coming out of a physical series. But why is physicality important for the Edmonton Oilers? Because the Vegas Golden Knights have been far from being healthy. And it sounds like potentially Mark Stone might not be healthy. Now we know that he's coming off the LTIR and probably isn't 100% healthy. But on Tuesday, there were shots of him leaving practice, laboring. Now there were also the videos of Connor McDavid laboring after or during that one practice. We know how that went over, so read into it what you will. But I've seen a lot of discourse around the Vegas Golden Knights and Vo- Vegas Golden Knights fans that if Mark Stone is not available in the series, you could spell disaster and, and, and spell the end of the season for the Vegas Golden Knights. So being physical, being hard on the Vegas Golden Knights players, specifically Mark Stone. And no, I'm not trying to endorse injuries for Mark Stone. What I am trying to say, if you make it hard on a player going to the front of the net like a guy like Vinny Dar- Deharnay makes it... Well, a player who is very effective in front of the net like Mark Stone is going to have to find different ways to get to the front of the net or try and find different ways to be successful because his body just can't take it. And that means you're taking his game out of his hands. And that means you have the game in your hands. So that is the chess match that the Edmonton Oilers have to try and play if the players and like the Vegas Golden Knights have been not very healthy all year. They need to be physical with the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. So the second key to success for the Oilers is physicality. And the third key to success or victory for the Oilers in the second round is Stuart Skinner. Stuart Skinner has not had the best of playoffs so far this year. We talked about it on the last episode and you understand it. The, the first round, first playoff round for Stuart Skinner and against a team who has had his number in the past. And now he's going up against a team who now again has had his number at least on the goal sheet in the past. Now he does have a 2-0-1 record, meaning he hasn't lost in regulation to the Vegas Golden Knights, but the latest loss for the Edmonton Oilers in regulation, or in the regular season, I should say, not in regulation, was against the Vegas Golden Knights in overtime, where they lost, uh, or where uh, Stuart Skinner allowed four goals in that game. Stuart Skinner needs to be better in the playoffs, and if he is, then the Edmonton Oilers will win this series no problem. We talked about Laurent Brassois' potential at collapsing in big games, but Laurent Brassois also showed us that he's been very good this season, and his collapses happened when he was 18 years old. (laughs) He's 30 now, so... There are a lot of layers to this for the Edmonton Oilers and specifically Stuart Skinner. But if Stuart Skinner gets to his form that he had down the stretch since March 1st, since the acquisition of Matthias Ekholm 
And really, the all-star break as well, the Edmonton Oilers are going to be just fine. So the three keys to victory in the second round for the Edmonton Oilers over the Vegas Golden Knights, as mentioned. The first one being special teams. Vegas is not good at all on the penalty kill, and the Edmonton Oilers have a pe- better penalty or power play, obviously, as well, than the Vegas Golden Knights power play, and their penalty kill is better than their Vegas Golden Knights as well. So use that to their advantage in more than more ways than one so the first one being special teams the second being physicality they are not at all healthy mark stone it seems like maybe under the table injured they're coming off an already physically demanding series against the winnipeg jets how banged up are the vegas golden knights use that to their advantage as the edmonton oilers are able to be a very physical team and the third key to success for the Edmonton Oilers is Stuart Skinner. He gets to his all-star form like he has been and potential Calder Trophy winning form as well. And the Edmonton Oilers will be heading to their second straight Western Conference Final in, well, the second straight year. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode right there. As mentioned, a lot of movement for the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights schedule, but game one is set in stone tomorrow night at T-Mobile Arena, 7.30 puck drop in Vegas. Uh, the first series between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights. How could these playoffs get any better? Well, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Let's wrap it up there, everybody. Tomorrow, we will have a crossover episode with Tony Cordasco heading into the first game of round two between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights. And hopefully, at the end of tomorrow, we can all play La Bomba, baby. <laughs>